And finally, the Lloyd's report for the chemical industry trends and outlook for 2023 is now available. Let's check it out. The chemical industry outlook for 2023 report is now available. More importantly, because the last two to three years has been very hectic, chaotic, and unexpected with a pandemic, with the Russian Ukrainian war, and finally, the war between USA and China for the microchips. All of this, as you can imagine, will have an impact in the chemical industry. But not only that, guys, we have the pressure of governments and companies to go net zero, and at the same time, Time trying to adapt to the new customer trends. All of this in this crazy digital world which is advancing at advanced spaces. Now, what I want to do in this video is to make a very quick overview on what are we talking about with these new trends, specifically the four main trends that Lloyd has selected for this 2023. And now probably you're wondering what is Deloitte, what do they do, and why it is even relevant for the chemical industry. Let's check them out. So first things first, Deloitte is a global professional service firm or company that provides a wide range of services to their clients in various industries, including audit, tax, consulting, and advisory services. The firm operates in more than 150 countries around the world with up to 330,000 employees. The large clients include corporations, government, agencies, nonprofits, and individuals. I'm pretty sure that you may have heard about Deloitte, maybe even started a co-op or internship, or maybe even worked at that company. It's one of the best consulting firms to go as an engineer, and you are going to be learning a lot. Now that you know what is Deloitte, what do they do, and so on, let's talk about the four main trends. Number one will be sustainability and innovation. Number two will be portfolio transformation. Number three will be supply chain management. And finally, it will be going digital or taking advantage of tech. But before we even continue with such trends, we need to understand the status quo on what are we standing right now. We're talking about a world which has most of the countries in high interest rates, mostly because of a global inflation. I'm pretty sure that you have noticed that prices are increasing drastically in a very short amount of time. Cost of living such as bills, electricity, gas, housing, and food are of course increasing in a very rapid manner. This is of course a direct effect on having a lot of cash running in the market. Also, the continuous weakening on the GDP growth. This is of course affecting investor trust and what they are doing is essentially moving from high risk assets into lower risk assets. As stated before, oil and gas prices are very volatile. It's very hard for a lot of companies to actually sustain or make forecasts into the prices or cost of such bills. Not only that, of course, the prices of goods are going to increase if we have an increase in oil and gas. Transportation, production, distribution are going to have a direct effect on this issue. Supply chains have changed a lot since pandemic hit, but also since the Russian-Ukrainian war. We will stated that the China-US war for microchips is also shifting a lot towards local regional production. And finally, the thing that we already know the most, climate change. This is a great challenge for a lot of companies because they want to achieve net zero in 2040, 2050, which of course requires action right now. Now that you know the basics of the macroeconomics and, and all the effects that are affecting the industry, let's check out the four main trends. Number one will be sustainability and innovation. One of the great trends nowadays is that a lot of companies are going green or want to go to net zero emissions, which remember is going to a neutral carbon emission. According to the Lloyd's report, 70% of the biggest chemical companies have pledged to go carbon neutral by the year 2050. As you can imagine, this will require a lot of work. It also requires a lot of investment. But thankfully, there's a lot of support from private companies and from governments. Good examples in the US will be the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act and of course the Inflation Reduction Act. Policies which include supporting these type of processes and technologies, going greener and going lower emission. Let's talk about number two, which will be portfolio transformation. And when we're talking about this, we need to say it straight. Chemical industry or chemical companies have been having a very good time on finances. 
They have strong financial positioning because most of them have been forecasting and betting into the best deals ever. Unfortunately, this was before in which companies could go straight forward and make investments and make such forecasts. But now the world is changing a lot and what they need to do is to improve or transform their portfolio. They can no longer invest into single industries such as oil and gas. What they need to do now is further diversify their assets and investments. Most of this may be done into the midterm, but more importantly, into the long term. Decisions that are making impacts into, of course, taking into consideration the new consumer trends, but also complying with going green. Finally, I saw this idea on the report. This trend will take longer to scale, given the uncertainty around feedstock prices, energy demand, supply chain, and end market demand affecting the appetite for strategic buyers. But the foundations for this shift are already being laid in the current environment, which is of course very promising for the chemical companies and the chemical industry overall. Topic number three will be supply chain management. It's no surprise that since the latest event on the pandemic and the war between Russia and Ukraine, there has been a lot of shift in the supply chain overall, independent in which type of industry you are working. All these ranges from oil and gas, energy, biogas, plastics, pharmaceuticals, building materials, and even more advanced chemicals such as specialty chemicals, catalysts, semiconductors, and microchips. Over the coming years, re-evaluation of the supply chain structures will be critical for producers to meet the scale of changes required for the next decade. Hence, supply chain will need to balance cost and carbon footprint while managing resiliency. And unfortunately, it's no surprise that the chemical industry is a global industry per nature. And not only that, talking about nature, the chemical industry is still very dependent on fossil fuels. Therefore, this is a very challenging task for companies to complete. Now, with geopolitical uncertainty, the industry is seeing the recent shuttering of plants in Europe another challenge for supply chain to absorb. And that's why the chemical industry has this big task, to restructure the existing supply chain, favoring the new geopolitical players. Going local and regional, it's now the trend. The famous nearshoring is something that's happening right now. This will for sure help to stabilize the chemical industry in the long term. Number four will be going digital and using technologies to improve the chemical industry status quo. I'm pretty sure that you already know that there's a lot of chemical industries that have spent millions of dollars in technology, in forecasting tools, in analysis of information and big data. Hey, maybe even in artificial intelligence to improve current processes, supply chains, forecasting demands, and so on. And this is what we mean with going digital. It is no longer always talking about the physical chemicals or maybe even online reports. We're talking about going full industry 4.0. The industry has been expanding to digital customer experience, using mobile devices for interaction, deploying predictive analysis for information, and enabling cloud architecture for computation. This digital foundation enabled the industry to essentially migrate to a virtual setting through the pandemic and operate effectively through disruption, which is of course great, meaning that the chemical industry is now almost bulletproof from any pandemic. We can now talk about the smart factories that are going to be working in the near future. We're talking about the chemical industry converging with operational technology, information technology, and the industrial internet of things. As you can see, the modernization of the chemical industry or the revolution into going into the industry 4.0 is for sure something relevant to consider into the next trends of chemical industries. And those were the four main points that the report shares, guys. I just wanted to let you know that, of course, there are a lot of trends, a lot of technologies or specific niche applications to each industry. But overall, we're talking about the chemical industry, bulk chemicals, specialty chemicals, fuels, maybe oil and gas, traditional companies such as pulp and paper, building materials, wastewater treatment and so on. Now, these are very broad or global tendencies. Of course, supply chain management is not only about chemical industry, it's about all manufacturing industries. We're not talking about 
the challenges of going green, it's not just about the chemical industry, although we know that it's one of the most important aspects to consider when you're talking about going green overall. And also, if we're talking about technology, we know that it's not only the chemical industry going for such tools. Lots of companies, lots of industries are investing heavily into AI, big data, and the internet of things. All this into the industry for point. So there you have it guys, what do you think of the report? On my behalf, I will say that Deloitte has a very broad understanding on the chemical industry. And more importantly, I really think that these are aspects that any chemical or process engineer must consider in their future projects. If you want to change of industries, maybe you now consider the supply chains behind the type of industry. Maybe you want to consider the effects of going green, if they have their net zero goal and how do they plan to do it. Or maybe you want to consider what are the technologies that they are investing in, in order to achieve the modernization of their industries. And before we go guys, please let us know in the comment section, what do you think about these trends? Maybe you didn't expect one of them, or maybe the reverse, you expected to see other type of trends and you didn't see them. Whatever it may be, let us know, please, in the comment section, and we will truly appreciate your thoughts. On my behalf, guys, that will be it. I'll see you in the next video.